This episode of D News is brought to you by Norton Security. Getting an injection? Where is that needle really going? And what's in that syringe? Hi everyone, Crystal here for D News. Injection is a common medical practice and all of us have to get our shots. Whether it's the chicken pox vaccine or a boost of insulin, we've grown to accept that injection is just a good way to administer drugs and vaccines. But how does that actually work and what is really being injected into your body? It turns out that what type of injection you get and the formulation used depends a lot on how quickly doctors want the syringe contents to be absorbed. This affects how often you would need to receive an injected treatment as well as your blood concentration of the active ingredient. Two main types of injections are intramuscular injections, which are injected into your muscles, and subcutaneous injections, which are injected just under your skin. Intramuscular injections like the flu vaccine and some steroids and antipsychotics are given in large muscle groups like your upper arm or buttocks because they need to reach the bloodstream and take effect quickly. This can happen because you've got a lot of blood circulating in your muscles to pick up the drug and distribute it throughout your body. Subcutaneous injections are probably the most common, and they include most vaccines and the insulin shots given to diabetics. Absorption of drugs injected under the skin is similar to that of absorption of muscles, but since there's less blood vessels under the skin, absorption can be slower. As a chemist, I think it's pretty cool that the absorption rate of an injected fluid is influenced by many formulation factors as well as the injection location. So water-based solutions are usually absorbed faster than oil solutions, and doctors can fine-tune the absorption rate by using mixtures of oil and water or water and oil to deliver the drug. The composition of an injected formulation may also depend on the solubility of the active compound. So there are many factors at play here, and controversy over the preparation of some vaccine formulations has led to the anti-vax movement. So why injection and not a pill? Injected treatments take effect faster, are more concentrated, and don't run the risk of being destroyed by your stomach acid before they can do their job. For all the good they do, there are some risks associated with injections. Our skin exists to keep germs out, and when we puncture it, we leave ourselves open to infection and transmission of disease. This is especially true when equipment is reused without adequate sterilization, as is frequently the case in less developed countries or in recreational drug use. Fifteen years ago, the World Health Organization estimated that in developing and transitional countries, unsafe injections accounted for respectively 5, 32, and 40 percent of new infections with HIV, hepatitis B, and hepatitis C. And due to worldwide safe injection campaigns, these conditions are improving, but not really fast enough. So now that you know a little bit more about how they work, are you still afraid of getting shots? Subscribe to DNews and let us know in the comments down below. And for a nerdy good time, come find me on Twitter, at PolyCrystalHD. HD.